All right, if you start to feel a little warm in the house and you reach up and you feel the air coming out of your vents is warm, so the air is blowing but it's not cold, these are some of the most common reasons why that's happening and what you can do about it. Let's get into it. Mechanics for non-mechanics. The first thing you wanna do, come over to your breakers. You wanna find, you have two breakers, okay? Unless you have a package unit but you'll have two breakers. One will say, like this one says AC blower, or it may say air handler. That's for your inside unit, or it may say heat, okay? That's your inside unit. And then you'll have another one that says AC compressor or condenser, and that's for your outside unit. So mine are the first two, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna flip them both off and I'm just gonna wait 10 seconds. Sometimes they'll be tripped, but sometimes they won't even be tripped or they won't look like they're tripped, but just turn them off for 10 seconds, okay? And then go ahead and flip them back on, okay? If that doesn't work, we move on to step two. Okay, so step two are these safety switches that have to do with your drain line. You might say, well, the unit's not running. What does that have to do with my drain line? Well, if the drain line gets backed up, you have these safety switches that actually shut the unit off telling you to, hey, fix the problem or call your AC guy to come and fix the problem. All right, so you come out here. We have our safety switch out here, or you might have one in the pan, okay? that has water in it. If you come out here and your pan is filled with water and the safety switch is keeping it off, that's why the unit is off. So you would drain the pan, suck it out. Um, in this case, okay, uh, this particular safety switch shows you how to unloosen it, right? You would take the top off and if there was a bunch of water and I have a little bit at the bottom, but if the water was overflowing or at the top, that's what's shutting off that switch. And so if that's the case, you would suck out this line. If you don't know how to do that, click on that video. And then you would uh, clean it back or turn it back on. Now, now, you might have a switch that's different, the older model that comes out of its own line, okay? and it's like a little cup with the top on it and it's got two wires coming out of the top. So you use a flat blade, blade screwdriver to, to kind of get that top off and it looks just like this. Pull that top off, it's got a little black uh, float on it. And if there's water inside the cup, then you know that's the reason that it's keeping the unit off. If you wanna know how these float switches work, click on that video right there. So if you check the breaker and breakers are fine, shut them off for 10 seconds, turn it back on. Um, and if you check the safety switch and that's not the problem, then it's most likely an outside issue. So you'll come outside to your outside unit. So the next thing you can check is for a bad capacitor. Uh, that's on your outside unit. The capacitor is what helps turn on your fan outside and also your compressor outside. Those are the two main things outside that are working, your compressor and your fan, okay? Your, or condenser fan motor, okay? It's your fan outside. So the capacitor helps turn both of those on uh, in, in some cases. In some cases, the fan does not need a capacitor in which case you still have a capacitor all, uh, most of the time in the compressor. So you come out here to your outside unit and your capacitor is going to be inside of this panel, okay? So you go to your breaker. Okay, so these screws are either 5 16 or quarter inch, okay? These ones in particular are 5 16 so you would open up the panel again make sure the power's off open up the panel my this one has four screws in particular um 
so the bottom two you can take off the top two you might take off just take them off sometimes you can just loosen them though and still get that panel off okay take the panel off okay your capacitor is that thing right there that's your capacitor right there and so that could be the problem as well um, there's videos on YouTube on how to change that out or you can call a AC contractor to come and do that we did do a video on what capacitors are how they work so if you need that information click on this video right here and uh, if you could take a second uh, and just like the video like this video subscribe uh, click on the bell for notifications. That way we can let you know when all of our videos come and it helps us to reach a wider audience with these helpful videos. Let's get back into it. So one thing that you can check on your unit is, is my fan running? Now, if the fan is running, you can come over here and you can feel this suction line and see if it's chilly or not. We've got a whole video on that right here. So you can see this is our suction line. It's cold, it's sweaty, okay? So it's cool and good. But if you came out there and that line was just warm, okay? Or not cold at all, and you saw the fan rotating, then possibly that compressor is not coming on, in which case the, uh, it's either a burned up wire that leads to the compressor or most likely or it's your capacitor the side of the capacitor that says common to hermetic that has gone bad okay so if you go out there you could have the fan working um but the compressor's not running or you might go out there and find that the fan is not running so let's look at that if you come out here and the fan is not running okay the breaker was on breakers on and yet the fan is not running the thermostat is calling for cooling it should be cooling but the fans not running then could be your capacitor as well on the fan side from common to fan um, or it could be the fan itself Okay, that has gone bad. If you have a newer system, it could also be something in the low voltage side. You know, if you got a fancy system, maybe, you know, a board, what the board has gone bad or something. But for just conventional systems, if your fan is not running, then most likely it's either going to be the fan itself that has seized up, which means that the, the blades are not turning. In which case you can take a screwdriver and put put it down there a long screwdriver put it down there and just kind of move the blades with your with your screwdriver and it should move if it doesn't move a full rotation or one or two rotations but just stops then the fan itself is seized up and you gotta replace the fan um well not you but your hvac tech needs to replace the fan um but or it could be the bad capacitor leading to the fan now the other possibility is if your fan side okay remember that the capacitor i showed you it had a hermetic it had a common to fan side and then it had a common to hermetic side if the common to fan side is bad and the common to hermetic side is good so the compressor's coming on but the fan's not coming on then your unit is going to have major problems cooling as well what will happen is see because the fan is there to get rid of the heat okay so it's getting rid of the heat from the compressor your compressor is your heartbeat your compressor is the heart of your system that's what pumps that's what gets you cooling cold air inside okay so but that thing is is um through the refrigeration cycle it gets very hot okay and when it's get it when it gets hot as it's pulling in that that um, outside air and pushing it out as it's pulling it in from the condenser so as that thing is getting hot it has to get rid of that heat and that's where your fan comes in it gets rid of the heat 
in the system, gets rid of the heat um, that's coming through your condenser coils and gets rid of the heat uh, from the compressor. But if that, if it's not able to get rid of that heat because the fan's not running, what's gonna happen is that compressor has an internal overload on it, okay? Let's just look at the compressor so you can see what the compressor is. So the compressor is that thing with the cover on it um, underneath the fan. Okay, it won't, they won't all be set up like this, but that's what I'm talking about, the compressor. So those compressors have internal overload switches on them. So what that means is, if the fan is not working, that compressor will get hot, hot, hot. It'll run for about, say, 30 seconds or even less. And then it's not getting rid of any of its heat, so it'll shut off internally so that it doesn't um, cook the compressor itself so there's a switch in there that it will shut the compressor off and it'll do that consistently cycling over and over it'll do it'll heat up and then it can't get rid of the heat it'll shut off and then it'll shut off until it cools down back to below that temperature so say 15 minutes or something and then it'll turn back on again there's no fan moving so it keeps that heat keeps that heat gets too hot shuts off again and it'll do that repeatedly and you, and what's going to happen is you're going to go inside and say there's no cold air coming out you're going to call an hvac guy and he's going to tell you either your capacitor was bad for the compress or for the fan side or the fan needs to be replaced itself but that's why is because it'll have super high hot pressures because it's not getting rid of the heat final basic thing to check is if you might be low on freon so you can check and do a temperature difference, a TD, and see whether you have the proper TD. If you wanna know how to do that, click on this video right here. Hope this video was helpful for you. Uh, like it, subscribe. Uh, let, us, let me know in the comments what we can do for you, uh, what kind of videos you want in the future, and we'll see you in the next video.